Hello, welcome. Today's video is going to be a little bit different to usual. It's going to be a Q&A session. I'm going to be answering some of your questions that you've sent me on Twitter and YouTube over the last few days. Make sure you stick around as well to find out about my 200 subscriber giveaway. Now, I've got my cans ready, so let's get going. <sighs> Lovely, right. Let's get started then. First question comes from JMS2001. And he says, when exactly do you think the takeover will be completed? Rumours coming out, that could be in the next couple of days or so. Um, so, basically I've, I'm convinced that the takeover is going to happen this week now. Um, it's been a pretty consistent message that it's likely to be the last week in April, so before May. So that, that puts us right in that window. Now we're in the last uh, week of April, so I reckon it's probably going to happen this week. Some people saying it could happen on Monday which uh, is likely to be the day you're watching this video. Uh, I'm not sure it'll be Monday, but I do think it could be sometime this week. And if it is, then that's going to be amazing. I can't wait. So the next question comes from Just Joe. Thanks for the questions, Joe. Um, he says, what team do you support and where are you from? Well, I obviously support Newcastle United. If, if you've watched my videos, most of my videos are about Newcastle United. Um, I've been a season ticket holder for Newcastle for almost 30 years. I've been going since I was six years old. I used to sit on the barrier in the Gallagher end and I used to, uh, my first season ticket was the season when Keegan arrived basically. My dad got us um, ha like half season tickets because he was taking us to games but as soon as Keegan arrived the crowds went massive and we, there was like people being locked out and stuff so my dad bought me and my brother and himself a season ticket. Uh, so that would have probably been 1992. And I've been a season ticket holder ever since. Um, I actually, as people have pointed out, uh, my accent is not a Geordie accent. Uh, that's because I live in Scarborough and I've lived here my whole life. Basically my dad, who is a Geordie, and my entire extended, extended family are from the Northeast. Um, but my dad moved for work when, when I was little and so I've just lived here all my life. So um, yeah, uh, that's who I am and I'm proud of being where I'm from but I'm also proud to be a Newcastle fan. I don't know if it's Keezer or Keza, NUFC03 on Twitter. They say, um, who would you want as, <laughs> as Brexit Steve's replacement? Potch or Rafa? Um, I'm not, I don't know about Brexit Steve, do we know that? That's the way he voted, I don't know. Um, Pochettino or Rafa Benitez, I mean, I don't think we can go wrong with either of those choices personally. I, I really do rate Pochettino. I know people say he's not won anything, but I think there's managers out there who um, are still good managers and possibly haven't won a lot of stuff. Um, I would love to see Rafa back just because I just think the place would be, I just think the atmosphere with Rafa back as manager would be something else. Um, and I think. Out of those two choices, I'd probably lean towards Rafa just because I think he did so well with his what he had. So I think that if he could be properly backed, you know, he's a proven he is a proven winner, and I'm sure uh, he would he would probably get us close to winning a trophy at least, um, and possibly even win one. Okay, next question was from uh, Nizelis One. Uh, it says, "Why have you got a red light in your kitchen?" <laughs> Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, basically, the the last video I did before this one, uh, I, I filmed it in my kitchen because I have nowhere else to film it. And uh, we've got some LED strip lights, which you can have any colour you want. I was meant to actually put them on blue, but they ended up on red by mistake and I forgot to change them. And that's it. <laughs> so, not a very exciting answer, but there you go. Uh, next question from David Bomer. What happens to Danny Rose if Pochettino becomes the next manager? I would suspect that any kind of any loan players are likely not to be made permanent. I would guess anyway, whether that's Pochettino as manager or not. If I had to get, if I had to gamble on it, I would probably say that Rose would end up going back to Tottenham and then being transferred to another club, which probably wasn't Newcastle. I think the other thing is, you know, over the next couple of years, the likelihood is most of the current squad will be sold and we'll have. We'll have almost like a different squad in the next 18 months to two years. Okay, next question is from my friend over at 100% Mags, the YouTube channel. Go and check him out. Carl over there, he's doing a great job making good Newcastle videos as well. Uh, he says, 
Uh, why shouldn't the Saudis take over the, our club? Uh, I mean, the obvious answer to that, I think, is the issue with the human rights and all that kind of stuff about who Saudi Arabia are as a country and this whole sports washing sort of idea of, of, of Saudi Arabia uh, just buying into sport to kind of make their image look better in the eyes of the world. Apart from that, there's not really any reason why we wouldn't want them to take over, I don't think, because they're going to make Newcastle the richest club in the world, potentially, and they will likely invest heavily in the team over you know, the next five to ten years. So there's absolutely no reason why we wouldn't want them, apart from the fact that they have this... Uh, obviously, the international community is putting pressure on them with the human rights issues in that country. Maybe over the next five or ten years, there's a chance that they could own Newcastle and... Um, Newcastle fans as uh, and the wider community in the country could put pressure on them to make more changes uh, in terms of human rights issues so that's my thoughts on it okay next question uh, is from Rob Nicholson over on Twitter thanks for messaging me Rob he says you've got a touch base on the media and how they're scrutinizing our fan base and I've, I've been following this obviously closely on Twitter, like most Newcastle fans checking every 10 seconds to see if there's been an update. Um, and what I would say about the media is there's there's a load of journalists out there who are doing a great job and who kind of understand the situation and are not putting pressure on Newcastle fans or calling them out about morals and that sort of thing. There are a minority of journalists who are doing the opposite of that and they are almost like on a wind up in a sense but they they're kind of they're kind of painting this out as if Newcastle fans are the problem here and it's totally unreasonable because as I mentioned in a previous video Newcastle do not have Newcastle fans don't have power over who buys their club. They don't have and never have done, you know? So to suddenly suggest that Newcastle fans have some kind of ability to stop this deal going through is just utter nonsense and to suggest that this is all this all lands on Newcastle supporters to sort this out is also just absolutely ridiculous in my view and really I just think as I said sort of previously yeah there's issues there we know that but I think you can separate that from supporting the football club at the end of the day we're football fans we support the team we support uh, the players on the pitch and that's why we got into football we didn't get into football to think about who the owners are and we've also got a message from Danny G NUFC over on Twitter um, go, and, go and follow Danny um, he got locked out of his Twitter account so he's trying to build his followers back up um, he's really good had a, a load of good conversations with him over the last week or so he says would you take Grealish to Newcastle given the poor image the bottom line in, with football is if you're good enough it kind of, it doesn't matter what you do, uh, you can get away with stuff, and that's not right, I'm not saying that's right at all, um, but the fact is football clubs will buy players with dodgy reputations if they think that that player is going to do a job for them. Would Grealish come into our team and do a job? Absolutely, I believe he would. But if we did sign him, it's kind of one of those things, isn't it? Once they play for you, you kind of get behind them. And, and that's kind of how football has always worked and, and will always work. Um, and at the bottom line is, if, they, if the club buy him and think that he can improve the team, and they do buy him, then fine. You know, we'll, he will be supported as a Newcastle player. And that's just the way of the world. Right, thank you very much for watching my Q&A video. Now, just before I go... Um, I'm very close to 200 subscribers. As soon as I get to 200 subscribers, I'm going to give, do a video which is a giveaway. I'm going to give away um, a Newcastle United related prize. So keep an eye out for that video because in that video, I'll give you details of how you can win. Okay, so please spread the word about my channel. If you've liked this video, please uh, watch another video and subscribe. And I would really appreciate that. And also spread the word. As soon as I get to 200 followers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, like I say. So it's your chance to win some Newcastle United merchandise. So yeah, just keep a, keep a lookout for it. 
Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you really soon for another video. See you later.